Welcome back to the Engineerable channel. In this video, I'm going to take a look at what's inside the HydroStrike Pulsar Pro Gel Blaster. So we're going to be tearing down this gel blaster and checking out what's inside, what kind of gearbox is in there, and how to take it apart, how to put it back together. So the first thing to do is to remove all the accessories. So I'm going to take off the magazine, take the sights off, that's easy. Take the stock off, also easy. Just pull down on this and pull it out. And I have to remove the battery. Make sure you unplug the battery. And while we're in here, we're going to have to cut this tape because this tape is going to prevent it from opening here. We're going to use a number one or number zero Phillips screwdriver with a relatively long, narrow shaft. This is a number one screwdriver, and it's going to start taking this apart. Usually, this screwdriver is fine, but I actually needed something that's a little bit longer because those holes are too deep. On the back, we do have to remove the stock mount separately. So what's interesting is if you remove the stock mount, it gives you access to the spring back there to remove the spring without having to take the whole blaster apart. See that? The spring comes right out like that. This is a nice feature if you're doing some mods. But otherwise, you don't want to put a stronger spring in there because you're probably going to break something. So the rail stays a separate part, and we have a nice aluminum barrel, very similar to the Splatterball rifles. And this gearbox also looks quite similar to the Splatterball gearboxes. So this is definitely a V3 Airsoft style gearbox. Sliding plates are a little bit different from the airsoft stuff. And this trigger is a little bit different from the splatter ball. Adding a hop up to this blaster is going to be a little bit tricky because the barrel is way down in there behind this flash hider. So you're going to have to cut out a portion of this to be able to add a hop up on the end there. I'm going to do another video where I add a hop up to this blaster. This is a full metal V3 airsoft gearbox. It should be an almost drop in replacement for this gearbox. It fits in the same space. It did not come with a motor or motor mount, but the original motor and motor mount could be used here. The trigger will probably have to use the original trigger because this trigger is much shorter and higher up. The original trigger should work because the pin spacing in here should be the same. This is a much higher quality gearbox, but we'll also have to use the original cylinder head and the plunger. And also you can see the porting on the Pulsar Pro is different from the porting on here. So it's a little bit different amount of air. So if we swapped out with this gearbox, we may have to change the porting a little bit so that there's not too much air for the barrel length. So one of the things I was curious to see is have they properly adjusted the position of the motor and the pinion gear and the bevel gear from the factory? And I can tell that the motor is already pushed pretty far forward. So there's only a small gap up here, about one to two millimeters. Let's see how much the motor has been pushed forward. So if I turn backwards, let's say one rotation, two rotations. So it looks like the motor is already pushed forward about two rotations. And so that means that they did do some adjustments from the factory to get the pinion and bevel gear engagement correct. But I can tell that I can push on the motor a little bit and it easily moves forward there. So it may be difficult to hear this over the sound of the piston and stuff, but you can definitely hear a different sound from the motor as you adjust the motor forward. So right now, it doesn't sound like the motor is forcing or anything. As I, as I turn it a little bit, you start to hear a whine from the motor. Here you start to hear a lot more. So back it off. So you back it off until you hear until the motor sounds smooth. And that's the position you're looking for, which is pretty close to what the factory setting was. So if you hear like a motor whine or gear whine, it's too far forward and then just back it up a little bit until you stop hearing that whine. 
And that's the easiest way to properly adjust the motor without having to take it apart and shim stuff. I'll be taking this gearbox apart in another video. And one thing that's gonna be interesting is to see like, can we use a regular piston without having to modify it like we did for the spider ball gearbox? I'm hoping the answer is yes. And then this will be much easier to convert to metal gears and use a regular piston in there rather than having to modify it. And being able to put metal gears in here will make this an amazing blaster where we can add a stronger spring to the back until the plastic gearbox breaks. The top rail on this blaster is a Picatinny compatible tactical rail standard made out of aluminum. And I'm gonna place it on top. It has exactly the same slot spacing, has the same width, has the same height, put it end to end. It's a little bit hard to see, but everything matches up. That means that you can take any Picatinny rail compatible accessory and slide it on here and lock it into place. So now we have a sight on the Pulsar Pro. And this is plastic, but since it's a separate piece from the whole blaster, it's actually a fairly sturdy, well-built piece. So this piece is interesting. It comes off completely as a separate piece. We don't even need to take any screws out because the body screws were holding it in there, sandwiched in there, and it takes the barrel with it. So the barrel seems to be securely held in place in the tip. I can't easily remove that without a lot of force. The T piece here, it just comes out pretty easily. It just looks like they used uh, some grease there to keep that on. I'm gonna disassemble this a little further to access the barrel. This twists out, doesn't seem to be glued in there. And this appears to be glued in in front here. So in order to add a hop up to this barrel, we're gonna to have to remove some plastic around there, especially the plastic on the inside. It's, I don't know how to get in there easily without damaging the aluminum, but we're gonna to have to cut back some of this plastic. The easiest thing could be to find a slightly longer barrel and then cut it to length and have it sticking out just past that. But that means that we also need to be able to remove this plastic piece from the barrel. So I'm going to be showing how to install a hop up in another video. I'm going to figure it out. So keep an eye out for that other video if it's not already been posted. I'm going to remove the gearbox and then pay attention to the location of the contacts. So the wire going to the gearbox that contact is on the left side. The wire coming from the battery, that contact is on the right side. There we go. So that one going to the gearbox is on the left side. There's a return spring for the trigger. When you put this back together, make sure that return spring goes over the post. I'll be tearing down and reassembling this gearbox in another video. I'm also gonna be doing some modifications like adding metal gears, a piston with a metal rack, and doing internal upgrades in the gearbox so that we can use a stronger spring to make it shoot harder. And this is the mag release button. Now this spring is very easy to lose. I actually already lost this spring, but fortunately I had a very similar spring around so it was easy for me to replace it. And that's it for the housing. And the only other thing that comes off of here is this grip comes off on both sides. Interesting why they did that, maybe just to get a different color a little bit more strength there. And these two pieces of plastic also pop off. The first thing I'm gonna put back in place is the gearbox. And the one main thing to watch out for the gearbox is that the trigger return spring goes in the right place. This trigger actually has its own return built into the gearbox. And it looks like they added another trigger return spring externally to make the trigger return a little bit stronger. So that goes over this post right here. The first thing I recommend doing is putting the magazine contacts back in place. So the one that's attached directly to the gearbox, it goes on the left side, side in that slot. And the one that's attached onto the battery, it goes into the right side. The reason we're doing that first is because we want those wires to sit down kind of low in the housing below the gearbox. Now when you place the gearbox down, make sure that the trigger return spring is over this plastic boss here and then place the gearbox back down. 
make sure these wires are in the slot here and everything's down below the surface. And the wires should also pass through these little two little slots here on the gearbox. Okay, the barrel has to go back into the top rail piece. So it goes in, fits in like this. Go ahead and tighten down these screws. And the flash hider can actually be attached on afterwards. It just goes in. You could take that on and off easily. Okay, when you go to put this assembly back on, you want to slide the T-piece over the nozzle. So just lift this up carefully, but make sure that the spring doesn't come off here. And slide the T-piece over until it's all the way in. And then you can set everything back down. Make sure that the orange piece goes over all these yellow screw bosses at the top. Make sure the cables are all in their place. You don't want anything to be pinched in here. Check out this cable routing on the gearbox. Make sure yours looks the same. The magazine release needs to go back in place. The spring has to be in here, otherwise the magazine won't stay locked. Now you can go ahead and put the other side of the housing back on. One thing to pay attention to when putting the cover back on is that the firing switch is in the right position. So right now it's on safety or full auto. Full auto is going to be all the way back like it is right now. So just put this down here and check first once you put it together to see if it's actually moving things in the gearbox. And before you put all the screws on, you may even want to just test fire it to see if it's working properly, full auto, single, and safety. And you're gonna tighten down all the screws. Put the stock butt attachment back on. And that's it for the disassembly and reassembly of the Hydrostrike Pulsar Pro. Make sure you check out my other videos to see the mods like how to adjust the motor properly, and a possible fix for when it's not shooting and making a whining sound. Also check out my video about changing the stock spring, and adding a hop up to the front of the barrel, and modifying the gearbox, adding metal gears, and a full metal gearbox. This thing is going to be a monster in disguise.